Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to learn about the Arrhenius and Bronsted Lowry definitions of acids and bases. It's Welcome back. So up to this point we have talked about the properties of acids and bases and we've learned how to write the names and formulas for acids and bases. Now we need to tackle the question, what actually is an acid and what is a base? Well, there are actually two different definitions that uh, we tend to work from. Now the first definition is called the Arrhenius definition. The Arrhenius definition is the one that most people are familiar with and it's one that everyone can very easily recognize. And it goes like this. An Arrhenius acid is any substance that has a hydrogen ion. In other words, when you're looking at the formula, if it starts with hydrogen, it's an Arrhenius acid. The Arrhenius base, by comparison, is any substance that has a hydroxide ion. So when you're looking at the formula, if there's an OH at the end, it's an Arrhenius base. Okay, very simple. The other definition is the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And that one goes like this. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is any substance that donates a hydrogen ion. In other words, if it has a hydrogen ion, it can give it up in a reaction to something else then it qualifies as a Bronsted-Lowry acid. So if you really stop and think about it, all Arrhenius acids are also Bronsted-Lowry acids because if it starts with that hydrogen ion, then it also is going to be able to give up that hydrogen in a reaction. By comparison though, the Bronsted-Lowry base definition uh, varies quite differently from the Arrhenius base definition. And that one goes like this. A Bronsted-Lowry base is any substance that receives a hydrogen ion in a reaction. So notice how that definition has nothing to do with hydroxide. And it is all about its ability to receive a hydrogen in a reaction. Okay? So now that we have talked about those definitions, let's see if we can now apply those definitions to some different uh, examples. And for that, I invite you to join me in the computer. Let's go. All right, let's do some examples. So you can see here our first example is HCl. Well, under the Arrhenius definition, well, it starts with a hydrogen ion. Therefore, this is an acid. And under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, well, if it starts with a hydrogen ion, then it means that it has that ion to be able to give up in a reaction. So this is also an acid. Okay, so an important thing to understand here is that if it is an Arrhenius acid, it is also a Bronsted-Lowry acid. Okay, let's look at the next example. We got MgOH2, magnesium hydroxide. Well, it has hydroxide. So under the Arrhenius definition, this is a base. But under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, this is nothing, right? It doesn't have a hydrogen that it can give up because this hydrogen is a part of hydroxide. That's not a hydrogen ion. Um, it also doesn't have the ability to receive a hydrogen because where would it go? This is an ionic compound that's completely balanced out. The charges add up to zero. So there's no place for it to go. So it's going to be nothing under Bronsted-Lowry. But NH3 is the exact opposite. It doesn't have a hydrogen ion. It doesn't have a hydroxide. So under the Arrhenius definition, this actually is nothing over here. But under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, NH3 has the ability to receive a hydrogen and become the polyatomic ion ammonium, NH4. So since it can receive a hydrogen, it is a base. Okay, so this is why the Bronsted-Lowry definition was actually created in the first place, because it expands our definitions to be more inclusive of other things. Because take a look at this next one. We got the nitrate ion. Well, under the Arrhenius definition, there's no hydrogen, there's no hydroxide, so it's nothing. But under Bronsted-Lowry, by the very fact that it has a negative charge, it means that it has the ability to receive a hydrogen ion to become neutral. So it is also a base under Bronsted-Lowry. 
So if you'll notice, if something is an Arrhenius acid, it is also an Arrhenius, I mean, sorry, a Bronsted-Lowry acid. If it's an Arrhenius base, it's not on the other side. But if it's nothing under the Arrhenius side, it's most likely a Bronsted-Lowry base. There's very little crossover between those two categories. All right, so what I want you to do now is pause the video, and you're going to try out these next four examples, and then we will check, and we'll see uh, how you're doing with this. All right, so pause here in one, two, three, pause. All right, so here are the answers. Uh, hopefully you got them right. If not, please feel free to comment below and I'll be able to kind of help you out with that. Uh, but before we move on to the next part of this lesson, I do have one special case I want to show you. And that is our good friend H2O, water. Once again, it's going to prove itself to be a bizarre molecule. So H2O can also be rewritten as HO. H because it is a hydrogen and a hydroxide ion put together. So it has a hydrogen and it has a hydroxide, so under the Arrhenius definition, it actually is both. Under the bronsted lowry definition, well, this hydrogen has the ability to be donated so that all that's left is the hydroxide ion, so it's an acid. It also has the ability to receive a hydrogen to become what you see right here, the H3O ion, so it is a base. So under the bronsted lowry definition, it is also both. So because water is considered both an acid and a base, we have a special term for it, because, well, why wouldn't we have a special term for it? This is science, after all. We call it amphoteric. It just means that this is a substance that is both an acid and a base. And this is also why on the pH scale, 7, which is neutral, does not mean that it's neither, because I know that's kind of typically how we like to think of neutral items as not being involved, but in this case, neutral actually means both. So 0 to 7 is an acid, and 7 to 14 is a base, and 7 is in both categories, because water at a pH of 7 is both. Okay, so it's kind of a cool little thing I wanted to point out there. So now let's move on to the next concept. If you recall from our definitions uh, for the Bronsted-Lowry acid and base, um, you, you might recall that I mentioned that it's happening in a reaction. So what we've got here are what we call uh, Bronsted-Lowry reactions. Now one thing I'm going to point out here is that these reactions have the double-sided arrow as opposed to just the one-sided arrow. Basically what this means is that these equations are what we call equilibrium. They go back and forth so you can read these equations left to right and right to left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, identify what is the acid, what is the base, and then what is known as the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Conjugate simply meaning complementary. So let me show you what I mean. Over here we have HNO3, nitric acid. Well, on the right-hand side, we have NO3, which looks a lot like HNO3. So they are conjugates of each other. HNO3 gives up a hydrogen or loses a hydrogen to become NO3. So according to the Bronsted-Lowry definition, that makes nitric acid, obviously, an acid. And then nitrate ion is the conjugate base. Now, why is it a base? Well, because if we read this equation right to left, NO3 receives a hydrogen to become HNO3, which satisfies the definition of the base. Water here becomes H3O, so it gains a hydrogen, making water a base, and H3O is a conjugate acid because when we go right to left, it loses a hydrogen to become H2O. Now before we move on to the next example, I want to point out something else that makes it a little easier for us to figure out what's what. The acid and base can only be found on the left side of the equation. The conjugate acid and conjugate base can only be found on the right side of the equation. So that greatly decreases everything that we have to find and actually makes it a lot easier to figure out what's going on. All right, so let's try one more example. We've got H2O, which becomes H3O. So it is receiving a hydrogen, making H2O the base. H3O is the conjugate acid. H2CO3 loses a hydrogen to become HCO3. 
So here is your acid, and this is the conjugate base. Now, as always, because you actually need to do this on your own, it's not enough to just simply watch me do this. You actually need to try it to make sure that you really do understand the concept. I have two more examples for you to do. So once again, you're going to pause, you're going to work it out, and then you'll start the video up again, and then you'll be able to check your answers. All right, so once again, pause, and one, two, three, pause. All right, so here are the answers. Check them out, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Well, as always, I am very grateful that you took the time to watch this video. If you have any further questions about the acid-base definitions, please be sure to comment below, or you can just send me an email to chemistrytalk at gmail.com. And while you're at it, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button. You'll help us all out a lot. All right, I am not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. So we'll